You can see when you look at the front plate, how many rounds actually penetrated that front plate. This is a 1914 armored auto car. It was the brainchild of a former French officer named Raymond Brutonel. At the beginning of the First World War, it was his idea to go and get support for the fabrication of armored cars. He settled with a small company named Autocar that were manufacturing trucks at that time. The armored cars were then designed and they were able to later put the armored shell on. It was a good, sturdy, heavy frame truck to begin with. The driver and co-driver sit on the actual motor. It is a gravity-fed fuel tank, which means that the fuel tank sits basically up high and the height of the fuel actually feeds the engine. And so your usual operating speed would be about 25 kilometers an hour. In behind them is the armored auto car part, which it would have two machine guns and crews behind it. Once it gets over, they need extra ammunition cases. So there's a whole fabricated back storage section on this particular one. The armored cars had about a five millimeter thick plate armor on the front and sides, which meant it was only bulletproof up to maybe a hundred yards. Less than that, and it would go right through the, the armor plate. Once you get close to it, you'll be able to see a number of bullet holes that have actually penetrated the skin. During the war, of course, all these vehicles get sent over. And when the war got into trenches, movement of vehicles was very limited. But in the last hundred days where the Canadians were advancing, these eight armored cars were allowed to do what they were meant to do, which was to run up and down the roads and provide fire support. At the end of the First World War, there were a number that were still remaining in the city of Mons in Belgium. And they participated in a large parade. Due to the disturbances in Canada at the end of the First World War, two of them were later then sent back to Canada. One ended up going to Vancouver and then back to Winnipeg where it disappeared. The other one goes to Montreal and then comes to Ottawa and it's the example that you see here. So for the centenary of the First World War, the museum returned this to operating condition, brought this back to the city of Mons, and it participated in the centenary program where it once again, a hundred years later, drove into the square in Mons, the city of Mons.